And you know the name Ferrari. While the car is one of the most recognized in the world, many don't know much about the man behind its creation. Part of his life is now being told on the big screen by another notable name, Adam Driver. Our Lindsay Davis sat down with the actor to talk about playing such a towering figure and the role he would like to play in the future. If you get into one of my cars, you get in the wind. Slow. What attracted you to the role of Enzo Ferrari? Initially, it was Michael, Michael Mann, who directed it. I understood that it was a good script, but I didn't quite connect with the character oh. immediately. And so it was through conversations with Michael and having a very extended pre-production that I started to understand what he wanted to do, which was create a character who was a racer first. That was his mentality, which I, I feel is articulated in the movie. Someone, when we did racing in pre-production, you have to have this prolonged myopic focus. It doesn't really allow room for any kind of external uh, distraction to get in the way. And that's our version of Ferrari. Jaguar races only to sell cars. I sell cars only to be racing. Someone who has all these potential, you know, crashes, to uh, continue a metaphor, but uh, has to stay calm on the surface and completely focus, but be furiously paddling underneath. Barra pulls up next to you. Challenging. You're even. But two objects cannot occupy the same point in space at the same moment in time. You lift, he passes. He won, you lose. What was it specifically about that time period in Enzo's life that that became the main thrust of this movie? Because it, it felt like he had a dynamic life. You could have even started it with when he was building the company. Yeah, it was three months in 1957 where it was particularly uh, yeah, dramatic. His, his uh, wife, Laura, who he started the company with, found out about uh, a kind of double life that he was living with this woman named Lena Lardy, and her son was about to be confirmed and wanted to know if he should be confirmed as it Piero Lardi or Piero Ferrari. It destroyed us! What do you care? Huh? You have another son, you have another wife! She's not my wife, but he is my son! Ferrari was on the verge of bankruptcy because he was more interested in racing than he was actually selling commercial vehicles. And this isn't a biopic, but I appreciate a movie's about people as opposed to trying to cover the entire history of someone, uh, really focusing in on a, a certain time of their life and kind of uh, having the challenge of telling the story of, a, of an entire life in, in only a few scenes. People are going to hear the title Ferrari, they're going to see the trailer, they're going to immediately think this is about racing and fast cars. But it feels like the heart of the movie is really more than that. Yeah, thank you for saying that. It, it, I, to hedge people's expectations, it, it could easily have been a movie that was just what you're describing, and it would have been cinematic and beautiful to look at, but that's not Michael Mann's films. They're either character-driven stories. A big theme in this movie is uh, loss and grief, and this is 1957, so it's pre-psychology, and these, these people have come up with their own coping mechanisms to deal with. In this instance, and Enzo's just lost his son a few years before the start of our movie, and he and Laura played by Penelope Cruz, have not yet really processed it or grieved. And, and he has this um, system in place that he developed over time of losing racers to uh, emotionally build a wall to be able to survive. If I blame you, I blame you, because you let him die. The father deluded himself. The great engineer. I will restore my son to health. Obviously, you just play one man. But it feels like he's almost three distinct characters in that he's in this fledgling marriage um, with the grieving the loss of his son, also this burgeoning relationship, romance, rearing a new younger son, and then also this company that's on the verge of success or failure within any moment. Did you feel that there, there was this distinction almost within your character? Oh, completely. I think that's the strength of the script written by Troy Kennedy Martin and also of Michael's films, that it is ambiguous at times and he's not likable necessarily, which I feel is a, such a boring thing to play. When we win, I can't see my cars for shots of Starlet's asses. <laughs> when we lose, you're a lynch mob. How I find people is filled with unresolved contradictions. 
he as uh, running a car company at that time was very aware of his myth and in a sense was playing a part. That's why he wears sunglasses. Mm. He, he, he builds a shield and an image that he's representing to the public, that he's representing to press and to his drivers. And we only see him really vulnerable when he's in the mausoleum with his son uh, mm -hmm. uh, Dino and the most relaxed when he's with Lena Lardi. And you talk about that, that kind of guard up that he has, that, that shield or the sunglasses. There's a, a particular scene that, that struck me where he's talking about uh, the pigeon. He says, stay there, pigeon, otherwise you're dead meat. Yeah. And it felt like it was really kind of talking about him, right? I mean, the cage door was open for him to leave Lara, right? But he was still stuck, almost like the, the pigeon. Did you, did you feel that there was a, an internal battle within Enzo, this man who's successful on the outside, but, but really this internal frustration that he lives with. Yeah, and an incredibly paranoid, uh, suspicious uh, person. There could be enemies at every turn. There's not a lot of people that he confides in. The scene that you're talking about, he's, he's talking with Scaglietti, and at the same time as he's talking in confidence with Scaglietti, he's talking about the car. So I love that scene because it's very much about how he is kind of imprisoned by this, this, uh, this image that he has. Uh, but at the same time, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't necessarily make a distinction between his private life and work. And how he ends the scene is, is by saying, uh, um, you know, we have history. And nothing, nothing can trump history, oh. you know. And I just thought that was a, a beautiful way of, of uh, expressing it. Many people know you from comedies like Girls, your fan favorite on SNL. One man came close to breaking me, H.R. Pickens. He did not succeed. <laughs> For I crushed him into the ground! <laughs> Who is H.R. Pickens? Exactly! <laughs> it feels like in recent years you've been drawn more into dramas like Ferrari. Do you have a, a preference? No, I mean, I would do a comedy. Uh, I just haven't, I haven't been asked to do one. I, I don't have much of a plan, except now that I'm getting older, I, I see that I'm not going to do this forever, and there might be some parts that I want to play before I, I, I age out of them. Um, but to me, it's a director's medium, so it's just, in my mind, if you can, and you're lucky enough, and you're available, you just try to work with great directors. Still so much more ahead for him. Our thanks to Lindsay and to Adam Driver. Ferrari will be in theaters on Christmas Day. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.